firstly we will discuss about uh, what exactly physics is but in my opinion it is very difficult to define physics because as we are progressing physics keeps on changing so firstly newton has uh, studied the nature if i could imagine myself as in two human being so uh, how i am here and uh, what's the nature of reality and why the universe is organized in a way that it is how the things are happening around us and uh, even from the home and we are using so much appliances and uh, all electricity and magnetism and the mechanical properties and the thermal properties and even the motion of the particles we see in the daily life and in the uh, you see uh, the satellites are moving and uh, cars are moving cycles are moving ships are moving airplanes are moving so all these are uh, just related to physics and if you want to attempt the answer that you can only give in terms of the physics and physics is not only just to explain all these motion of the particles com uh, complex phenomena like uh, ocean waves are coming galaxies are there the building structures and uh, so many things that you have uh, that you can explain in terms of the physics so physics is not just only to constrain and to explain these phenomena only because as you talk about uh, chemistry because uh, in chemistry you are dealing with the molecules and they have the bonds formation in the molecules when you are talking about the bonding and uh, bonds formation so uh, it is only possible when you will have a concept of, with the interaction of atoms so interaction of atoms that you are dealing with only in the physics so that means chemistry that you can explain only in terms of the physics chemistry is just laid down after the foundation of physics and uh, when you talk about uh, ourselves uh, like our body how our body is functioning and uh, how our consciousness we have and uh, how the mechanical properties of our body has so so many things that you uh, have in the biological systems and that you can explain in terms of the chemistry because we are, they have the molecules and the bond formation inside it and uh, they are giving the interactions so that means biology can be explained in terms of the chemistry and chemistry can be explained in terms of physics so that means physics is not just only to explain the nature and the natural phenomena and uh, it's not only to related to the motion of the particles so that means in in a way that uh, physics is a physical science that can explain chemistry and even the biological sciences also and uh, if you want to study physics so that you can uh, study physics in only in terms of the mathematics because mathematics is the purest of the sciences if you have a concept and if you saying that uh, uh, nature is doing something natural phenomena is are there so how you can explain your concept so that concepts that you can explain in the physics only in terms of the mathematics so mathematics is the tool with which you explain physics these all are related to each other Uh, it's not like that mathematics is different and physics is different chemistry is different or biology is different and even computer science that is not the different because computer science is also related to the physics and physics in terms it is related to the mathematics so that means you are doing all these uh, subjects in your uh, stream here that because in computer systems and in the laptops uh, you have so so many things that you have in this uh, system so that that you can only explain in terms of the physics and uh, physics is not just to the macroscopic phenomena like galaxies and the solar systems and uh, the satellites and the planets so as you uh, decrease your size from the macroscopic to the microscopic so physics is dealing with all these objects from the macroscopic to the microscopic if suppose you have any object and you cut that object in such a way that you get the powder system okay so from the powder system you can create so many things so if suppose firstly when you, the computers that you have they are the classical computers their speed is also very slow but now as you are moving from uh, topic to microscopic that mean you are dealing with the nanotechnology so you can even make your computers and your uh, uh, laptops uh, speeds very fast that means what we discussing about the quantum computing so that means physics is uh, used to explain all the macroscopic phenomena and all the microscopic phenomena and that just you can explain in terms of the mathematics so here we uh, are discussing why we need the quantum mechanics because when we start learning physics 
we learn in a manner how newton understood this according to newton he had made the theory of gravitation and uh, according to the theory of gravitation he has studied the universe and how the planets have been uh, organized and how they are moving around it so some kind of force is there that they uh, that binds those planets inside the solar system so in that way the concept that he had made at that time he had made the theory of gravitation so firstly he had not made the newton laws so he had he had made the theory of gravitation at in 1666 so in 1666 he had made the theory of gravitation and after 20 years in 1686 so he had made the newton laws okay so all the complex phenomena from the microscopic to the macroscopic uh, before 1900 all were explained using the newton laws or newtonian mechanics so up to 1900 all the complex phenomena and the motion of the particles from macroscopic to the microscopic they are explained using the newtonian mechanics and that newtonian mechanics is the uh, classical mechanics in the 1900 because at that time max planck has uh, uh, discovered the photon gas according to newton that particle can have any energy from zero to maximum and uh, uh, that means it has continuous energy and it can take any energy from zero to maximum so it is a continuous energy spectrum they have and uh, but uh, when planck was uh, uh, doing his experiment so and, and at that time he found that the energy coming from that black body it is not in the continuous form so it is in the photons that they have that means uh, uh, they have the discrete energy spectrum so that has changed all the physics then because firstly you see physics is uh, saying that uh, they have they can have any energy when you have the simple pendulum when you displace the pendulum from the mean position to the extreme position it is oscillating so uh, I, this is also based on the classical mechanics and you see your energy can have value from zero to maximum that means amplitude that if they have the maximum amplitude that means they have the maximum potential energy and then kinetic energy and potential energy conversion is there but you see your energy is continuous every time in 1900 you see when he was doing the experiment with the black body so uh, he found that the the particles have the energy continuous it's not the continuous but it is a discrete energy that uh, uh, they have so that means physics has totally changed now so from the continuous now you have the discrete energy spectrum because at that time some complex phenomena that are not explained in terms of the classical mechanics like photoelectric effect okay so uh, why uh, from the atoms we are getting the spectral lines so if uh, particles have the continuous spectrum so we should not get the spectral lines we should get the road spectrum okay so that means uh, there should be not be a lines continuous spectrum that you can get from the atoms but after that you, they found that their spectral lines are coming so that means they are uh, related to some discrete energy states they are contributing to some uh, specific energy levels so that means it is the discrete energy spectrum they are giving so the physics has been changed from classical to quantum because at that time they because when they have the continuous spectrum we deal with the classical mechanics and when we deal with the discrete energy spectrum we have the quantum mechanics up to 1900 all those complex phenomena ocean waves and uh, galaxies and uh, satellite motions everything and motion in the daily life they are explained using those newton laws but at the and uh, 1900 when max planck was discovering uh, or uh, doing the experiment so this physics has been changed so this physics has been changed from classical to quantum mechanics because in that case you have the uh, discrete energy spectrum because uh, when you are dealing with the microscopic particles so that microscopic particles are not obeying the continuous spectrum those particles are obeying the discrete energy spectrum okay so you see uh, first uh, we have here the classical mechanics so that classical mechanics is uh, the newtonian mechanics and uh, this classical mechanics is applicable for the uh, objects that have the velocity which is less than less than velocity of light okay so we uh, write here that uh, velocity which is uh, less than less than velocity of light 
so uh, this is the classical mechanics and uh, when we uh, are uh, moving from macroscopic objects to the microscopic objects so your mechanics will change and your mechanics will now classical mechanics to quantum mechanics so that quantum mechanics is also applicable when the motion of those particles uh, having the velocity less than less than velocity of light so but what happens when your objects having the velocity comparable to the velocity of light maybe it is c by 2 c by 3 c by 4 or maybe uh, you know it's 10 power 8 so 10 power 6 uh, velocity they have or 10 power 7 velocity they have so that means you are giving uh, the velocity of those objects very high so when they have the very high velocity so at that time newton laws also fails because firstly we are saying that when uh, you are going from macroscopic to the microscopic so newton laws are failed but when you are talking about the classical mechanics and you are dealing with the macroscopic objects and just you are just changing the velocity you are changing the velocity in a way that this velocity is comparable to the velocity of light so at that time newton laws also failed so uh, at that time einstein has made the theory of relativity so that theory of relativity is it actually the special theory of relativity e equal to mc square that means the uh, mass can be converted into the energy and energy can be converted into the mass this happens when your velocity of the particle or velocity of the object is comparable to the velocity of light so at that time you deal with the relativistic classical mechanics so this is the relativistic classical mechanics and uh, same is for the quantum mechanics also because when we uh, are dealing with the microscopic particles like electron proton neutron so they have the discrete energy spectrum and uh, the equations of motion they have used to uh, study that uh, dynamical systems um, that also have the velocity uh, less than less than velocity of light but as your particles if you are giving so much energy to those uh, particles so that means if they have the velocity comparable to the velocity of light so those laws that has been made in the quantum mechanics also so they are not being useful in uh, that case when velocity is comparable to the velocity of light and at that time that uh, theory that we are using it is the relativistic quantum field theory so you see uh, when we are going from macro to uh, microscopic motion so we have this uh, classical mechanics to quantum mechanics we have macro to micro then we move and uh, when we are dealing with this high speed okay so when we are dealing with the high speed relativistic classical mechanics or relativistic uh, quantum mechanics we have the velocity which is comparable to the velocity of light it is uh, according to einstein when uh, he has made the theory of relativity so he has made the constraint that no particle can have velocity greater than velocity of light so it can be comparable to that but it is the extremum it is the maximum value that the light can have uh, that is the velocity of light 